honorable guests and speakers, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor and a pleasure for me to address this audience this morning. I would like to express my appreciation for the exceptional work of Shaher Bulakras, the president of MedTSO, and Angelo Ferrante, secretary general of MedTSO, and everyone behind the organization of this very important and crucial event. Thank you very much for organizing this stimulating uh, debate and for giving me the opportunity to share with you all uh, some input to open and develop the discussion we are going to have today. I am sure that thanks to the participation and the contribution of such distinguished speakers, this event will provide with a broad and comprehensive picture of the state and the evolution of the regional energy sector and the Euro-Mediterranean dialogue policies. I believe it will also contribute to the development of ideas and strategies in the perspective of promoting cooperation and the reinforcement of the electricity interconnections and infrastructures in the Mediterranean basin. Energy cooperation is one of the most prominent aspects on the international diplomatic agenda and it is particularly significant for Europe, which is highly dependent on the global energy market. In particular, in the near future, energy will become an increasingly central issue in the relationship between the northern and the southern shores of the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean region, with its diversity, offers indeed infinite po uh, possibilities for regional and bilateral cooperation in this field, addressing common challenges such as the need for diversified energy supply and the fast-growing energy demand, especially taking into account the demographic in a currently constrained context, both in terms of energy availability and environmental impacts of the conventional energy sources. The scarcity of primary energy resources and energy security are issues that require a strategy focused on ensuring the diversification of supplies. This strategy, however, cannot ignore the new paradigm of economic and environmental sustainability carried out by the EU through the Green Deal. In order to deliver a Green Deal, a real one, making Europe the world's first climate neutral continent, renewable power production must become the main source of energy for the entire economy. These prospects are matched by the still largely unexpressed potential for the production of renewable energies, especially solar and wind energy, in the southern and eastern Mediterranean basin. Mediterranean countries have furthermore different but complementary energy characteristics in terms of load profiles and generation mix, which could be exploited in a synergistic way in order to increase energy exchanges and achieve energy transition objectives. The realization of this potential will undoubtedly bring enormous benefits in terms of energy security and reduction of emissions as well. However, this means the pace for the renewable energy build-out has to increase to stimulate a substantial push in the uptake of clean and decarbonized electricity. Electrification is a realistic solution for which existing technologies can be widely deployed. This process implies the progressive integration of national elect electricity transmission networks aimed at fostering the development of RES in the Mediterranean and limiting the impact of climate change through a substantial increase in energy efficiency. The optimization of, of the regional energy system would lead to a better integration of markets, increased interconnection and intelligent management of networks, including the facilitation of access for renewable energy and demand side management. There is one flagship project in, the, in this particular aspect that encompass all these aspects. It's ELMED, the energy interconnection between Italy and Tunisia. The 200 kilometers, 600 megawatt HDVC interconnection submarine cable is a concrete example on how we can bring the two shores of the Mediterranean closer, not only from an energy point of view, but also from a political and social one. 
The project would at the same time help Tunisia in developing green energy production and achieving its renewable energy targets and would integrate the regional networks with the EU, thus contributing to the diversification of energy sources and increasing energy security. It would also be an important driver for sustainable and integrated development in Tunisia, a crucial country for Europe and the beacon of hope for the whole region, the Maghreb region and the fi finally also for Europe. This in turn would be an extremely helpful instrument to further strengthen future cooperation in a number of fields. As a two-time chief observer in the country and as the 2016 rapporteur in the European Parliament on, the, on a report on EU relationship uh, with Tunisia in cur the current regional context, I can't stress enough how important it would be to finalize Almed and I'm glad this has been once again recognized by the European Commission by including the project in the list of the projects of common interest, meaning those infrastructures that are identified as priority by the European Union as a whole. However, some issues still remain and to accelerate the, the pace of uh, this process, several aspects need to be urgently addressed, such as the substantial diversification of portfolios and business models, digitalization, research and innovation, and increased consumers' engagement. It will address what I consider to be two of the major obstacles to an enhanced energy cooperation in the Mediterranean. Firstly, there is a need for a stable regulatory framework to strengthen competitiveness, reflect the region's energy security needs and enable investments that can reflect its sustainability, climate and social objectives. The role of MEDREG, the Association of Mediterranean Regulators, which works to create a common regulatory culture, and the UFM, which is important from a political point of view, is fundamental in this respect. Secondly, there is a necessity for greater cooperation and investments in clean capacity and energy infrastructure built out in order for the effectiveness of energy systems in North African countries to reach a level that allows for advances. Addressing the current EU taxation policy to promote clean fuels and work with the industries and businesses to enable the significant investments required should be at the core of the European Union strategy. In this context, MedTSO, the association hosted by Terna in Rome, which brings together the TSOs of 19 Mediterranean countries, carries out excellent initiatives to foster regional cooperation, in particular by drawing up a 10-year network development plan in the Mediterranean every two years, the so-called Master Plan of the Mediterranean Electricity Interconnection, the MMP. Renewable energies, as I said, in the Euro-Mediterranean context now account for about 11% of total supply. This is a data from 2019. But by 2040, it is estimated that more than two-thirds of installed capacity will come from renewables. The integration of the Mediterranean by accelerating the energy transition, which gathers the two shores in shared objectives of energy security, competitiveness and the fight against climate disruptions, should be seen not just as an opportunity, but as a real necessity. Not only because it would help to control the energy demand, to promote renewable resources and to finally optimize and phase out the, few, the use of fossil resources, but also because in the face of the major economic, social and environmental challenges affecting the region, the transition could guarantee overall stability and sustainable development. The integration and coordinated operation of the Mediterranean electricity systems would have a direct impact on the strengthening of the region's security of supply and energy resilience with the effect of substantially reducing geopolitical tensions. Finally, embarking on an energy transition path could also help improve social welfare and well-being in the region and contribute to job creation and more resilient societies. To meet these compelling expectations, however, the energy transition in the Mediterranean needs to take the form of a social contract that involves more the communities that are often left behind. 
it will have to focus on protecting the local environment and securing a just transition of setting jobs lost in the fossil energy sector with new opportunities in the renewables industry and while ensuring cost efficiency in both generation and grid to keep the European economy running. The real challenge now will be to work in synergy and partnership businesses and institutions from the two shores of the Mediterranean to seize this unique opportunity towards a more and sustainable future. Moments of confrontation like today's are important steps in the direction of a more agile, low carbon society powered by renewable electricity. Thank you very much for listening and let us welcome the next speaker. Thank you so much and have a great work together today.